Are you looking to expand your mind? Do you like to challenge and be challenged? Looking to improve yourself and share your experiences professionally and personally? You're in the right place. Welcome to ScoutCast, Roasting Marshmallows, with your host, Rolf Surd. And we are live. Welcome to another episode of ScoutCast. My name is Rolf Surd, and I'll be your host. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about estimation or no estimation. But first, I'd like to uh, let you guys listen to some feedback that we've got from one of our listeners. And uh, she had uh, something very interesting to say. Hey guys, great podcast. I'm enjoying a lot. For the next time, could you make sure that everyone is introduced to give a bit of context of why um, yeah, all the guests are there? All right. Well, thank you very much for uh, sending in that little audio file. I think, uh, yeah, we uh, we all can use that feedback very much. And uh, I'd like to thank you. And I'd like to also welcome every listener to send in their feedback. And hopefully, uh, yeah, we can improve the show every week to get better and better. So please, if you have any feedback for us, please send it uh, as an audio file or maybe even written text to uh, podcast at fourscouts.nl. All right, so on to today's subject. I'm a bit scared, man. I'm, I'm, I'm sweating. I don't know about you guys, but uh, we're going to be talking about uh, estimates versus no estimates. And it's a, a very heated debate on, on Twitter. We'll get into that uh, a bit later. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, introduce the subject just a little bit more. So the, the no estimate movement started with a, a blog post that uh, Woody Zuil made. I hope I pronounced that name correctly right there. It's a bit uh, difficult for me. Um, and we'll link to that uh, to that blog post uh, somewhere in the description of this podcast. Um, it's a very interesting read, at least. So, I mean, we all love to look ahead, right? What weather is it going to be today or next week? How will my favorite sports team do against uh, the next opponent? How is the stock market going to do or my cryptocurrencies? And, you know, the answer to all of these questions will be at best an educated guess, right? You can never be 100% sure. And this is fine for most things. But for work, you know, things tend to be a bit different. You're going to ask a painter how long it will take him to paint your house, and uh, he will probably have a pretty good idea after he's done an inspection of your house how long it's going to take for uh, for painting it. But in the field of developing software, it's a, it's a whole different ball game. Uh, estimates have always been a part of software development, but uh, by estimating uh, the amount of time, money, and effort it will take to reach the Project goals and outcomes, developers and team leaders can help managers and clients better predict budgets and meet project goals. But that's a theory. It's a theory behind this widespread and often unquestioned use of estimates in the IT industry today. In recent years, developers such as Woody Zul and others have begun to question the efficiency and even the purpose of using estimates to predict the project's cost and timeline. What makes a project or product successful? Is it finishing the project precisely on the deadline? I don't know. Today on the Scoutcast, we're talking about this very thing, estimates versus no estimates. And if you've happened to follow the hashtag no estimates tag on Twitter, you will have noticed that it's quite a religious debate. So I fully expect this podcast to be controversial. So let's get into it. So my guests today are my colleagues, and even in a tight-knit team such as ours, man, there are definitely some different opinions on this very topic. So I'd like to welcome Enhik, Arno, and Panche. Welcome, Hi. guys. Hi. Thank you. So, uh, uh, Arno, could you uh, introduce yourself quickly and uh, tell us where you're at? Are you a no estimates or a estimates type of guy? Sure. So uh, I'm Arno, working for Scouts, living in Utrecht, uh, doing development for like 15 years. Uh, help transform teams to Agile, help implement CICD and other stuff. Um, I thought I would share uh, something stupid every podcast. <clears throat> so last time I told you guys I was a mammal. So this time I'll tell you a small thing. Uh, I have a piano in my living room. And I had a lesson like 10 years ago. And I never play anymore. So it's there just to, I don't know, confront a, me with my failures. Yeah, it's like a coffee table book, right? To start yeah. a discussion. Yeah. So uh, there's something about me, I guess. And uh, I'm a bit in a no estimate camp, I would say. I worked at a company where we did the story points on stories, and I think it created more noise than actual benefits. Okay. But I guess that's, uh, that's up for the discussion today. Yeah, we'll see. So, Panche, what about you? Hey, my name is Panche Gastelowski. I'm one of the most recent joinees of uh, Four Scouts. 
I, uh, I come from a digital agency background. My personal, the reason why I'm here, well, while estimates uh, are imperfect, I do believe that they matter, uh, since uh, both people and businesses are date and time driven. Um, so yeah, curious to see the opinions and the arguments of the the rest of my colleagues, and uh, let's see if we learn something uh, today. All right, so I'm gonna maybe set you up for failure here, but if you are in the estimates camp, I would like to have an estimate from you on the exact length of this podcast. Probably around an hour, give or take. Okay, so we'll uh, we'll double check that after, see if we exactly hit sixty minutes or not. Oh, I'm not saying 60, well, plus minus. It's going to be there somewhere. <laughs> it's as uh, long as we manage it as we go, then it's going to be fine. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's the debate right there, right? All right, Enhik, welcome. Wow, well, thanks uh, for having me. Uh, well, my name is Enhik, and uh, I'm definitely, I have a developer background. And uh, yeah, I'm definitely on the no estimation camp. I've been done uh, IT also for quite some time. So I don't know many years, but definitely like more than 15. And uh, it's, uh, I never had a good experience with the estimation field, never really understood the point until I realized when I had my own startup that I actually never used it and made me wonder if after I came back to the market to work for like uh, companies as a consultant, like why would people do that? And I'm definitely mm -hmm. one of the, people inside of our scouts who advocates for that. And every customer I go, I try to explain why this is. So I'm definitely on the no estimation. So I'm looking forward for this uh, conversation. Okay, so uh, it's basically uh, like one and a half or two to one here. So Panche, I'll be, uh, I'll be backing you up, man. Otherwise, uh, well, it's going to be a difficult like, episode. I uh, feel like a wounded shark in the tank of piranhas, man. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> you, should, blood. you should be. Uh, I know, I know. <laughs> okay. So yeah, man. Let's uh, let's get let's get started. So um, let me just start the discussion by saying, like, you know, um, if you can't provide an estimate, you know, you won't get funded, right? It's just how business work, and we're basically all in this to make money. Like, you work to make money. Businesses, you know, exist to make money. Usually, I mean, of course, there are some people out there that want to make the world a better place, and for that, you might need to check our other podcast about sustainability. But that's beside the point. So if you can't provide an estimate, you won't get funding. So how does the no estimate camp feel about that? Like, how can you guys get work if you refuse to give an estimate? Well, I think it's uh, it's definitely an interesting point. And I think if uh, you are working automatically, like say your whole system is set up to have like, okay, give me an estimation and I'm going to fund your project, then it's definitely no other way, right? It's more like uh, basically you for me as a comparison, like, well, we always speak English. If we don't speak English to me, I cannot communicate. So that's part of the system. That's part of the process. And uh, and then, yes, this doesn't work. But like, uh, I think from the no estimation point of view, we come from the idea that you should basically fund a little bit of that project, see how much progress they made it, and based on that, decide, okay, now I can actually continue funding. Because if you're just funding on base on estimation, what you're basically doing is you're gambling because somebody gave you a number and you basically say, okay, I'm going to pay for this, but you have no idea if this is actually going to become what it's going to become. Okay. Punch here. What, what, jump what, in what, here. Yeah. So you say to your customer, okay, please provide some funding, then see how it goes. Right. Yeah. Are you going to provide the customer with something they're going to get from, for that amount of money that, that they're paying for? Yeah, I'm going to provide with what they want in the shortest amount of time. And then we're going to reevaluate every week if that's what they want. So how would you do that without estimates? Exactly. I don't estimate. In the end of the week, we look back and then we check like, oh, okay, this is what we have achieved in a week. So pretty sure that next week you're going to be around the same or not. No, no, but my question was a bit different, right? So you say uh, at the beginning of a project, you would ask the customer, please pro you know, well, secure this budget, let's say maybe 10% of whatever you want to say, let's see, let's test this relationship. Yeah. And the customer is going to say, okay, but what am I going to get for that amount of money? And the answer is, I don't know. And as a thing, like on the estimation side, you're basically believing you are trusting, right? So as a person, you, you're not giving any guarantee because that's the whole point. An estimation is a 
guess. So the person is saying, I guess I'm going to be done in three weeks. So you basically say, I'm funding based on your guess. And then cool. you can talk, for example, to Arno, and Arno can say, well, I do in a, in a week. So now we are comparing two different, let's say, pricing project per time, but you still have no guarantee in any of them. Correct, but I'm hiring you as the expert in this field, and I expect you as an expert to know what you're going to deliver for that amount of time and, and that's that money. Yeah, but I think that's a valid assumption, but I think it's also a wrong assumption. So if you're hiring, a, let's say, a painter who is building an art or a sculpture, or if, let's say, you are uh, a football player, you are a professional, or you're a football coach, and I say, well, or you are a researcher for cancer, tell me an estimation how long it's going to take for you to find the solution for cancer, or how is this match going to end up being? There is way too many factors that you cannot predict. So I think it becomes the difference between a complex system and a complicated system. But then if you are comparing, let's say, software with, let's say, building a house, you can never compare this two. And I think that's when the whole discussion becomes very complicated because, yeah, I, you are, let's say, a professional researcher and I tell you, like, yeah, tell me when your research is going to be done. Well, you cannot possibly know that. Well, can you not find a way in the middle ground that you say, well, okay, these are the things that we're going to do. These are the steps we're going to take. This is what we think if everything goes well, we, we can reach for this amount of money. And obviously, I agree with you. Well, you need to talk uh, regularly, weekly on how far you are along that, let's say, original whatever planning or roadmap. Um, but in, in my experience, that is has never been like a strong argument. It's like, oh, well, just just well, pay us, whatever, and then we figure out where how far we go. At least when it's a starting relationship, if you already have a relationship with a, with a customer, that they, you are initiating a new project with them and they already know what they can, expect, they can expect of you. And this approach, I totally, yeah, I think they totally would buy it. There's no problem. But in a moment that you are pitching a project with four other competitors and the customer is, well, budget-driven, right? Uh, Argument that's like correct. This is very you, you, weak. you cannot do it. No, no that's the thing. It's not. It's just a thing. You cannot do it. So, in the, in my eyes, the other three are betting in something that they don't know. So, like, I, I had this experience, right? Like, people constantly talk about, like, yeah, uh, in construction, they always give you an estimation. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you were ever any of you have done construction, but none of them got close <laughs> I know of you the have. estimation <laughs> they give. <laughs> okay, uh, and then I came to the conclusion that then what happens is you make them accountable for your budget. And you say, look, you told me 14,000 euros, uh, two weeks, and has been three, and I'm not paying any more money. So what do you think is going to happen? Legal department. That's one. Or well, a lot of things can happen. Exactly. But like at least what happened to me was they take shortcuts. So a few years later, something break, and I got to pay for it. So in the end, it's mm -hmm. not in the interest of the person who is getting their service done, that the estimation and everything is correct because it's, again, it's an estimation, right? So it's a range. Yeah. So it's not going to be exactly two weeks. So as you said, one hour, give it or take. Uh, but in the end, if the budget is fixed, in the end, you're going to pay the bill twice. So what I found it hard with the estimation is uh, it removes the conversation that you want to have. And which well, conversation not, not is that about the actual thing that you're trying to achieve? Exactly. Rather. And exactly which value you wanted to achieve. And then you enforce, I want to, I have this budget, I have this time frame, get the job done. And then you're going to search for someone who can deliver the impossible. And then in the end, none of them get what they actually need to. So I think if the conversation shifts away from, wow, tell me the budget, the numbers and everything and say, this is what you wanted to achieve. How can we do this as quick as possible with the minimum amount of effort? And then let's calculate the prediction of this after some time. You said something like none of them get what they wanted. Yeah. What yeah, so what I meant by that is, let's say, for example, at least in my case, when I hired this construction guy to work for my house, yeah. uh, I wanted to have, well, a wall removed, like the whole uh, plumbing done for well the cheapest amount of money as possible in the time frame that he wants so it was like a, a he estimated two weeks i bought a new house so i canceled my contract 
And what ended up was that, wow, he didn't finish in two weeks. I didn't have my house done actually in four weeks. Uh, I still paid the same amount of money. And after that, he took shortcuts that two years later I had to pay more. So in the end, he got stressed because he had to work for free. I had to pay more because in the end, the job was not done the way how it was supposed to be. I, my expectations were totally wrong because he said about two weeks and the expectation became actually four and then six. And then in the end, that's what I meant. Nobody got what they wanted. Of course, in the end, I got my house fixed, but that was a cost and yeah. time always more than what is estimated. But uh, that's, that's quite interesting because it seems like you're building the case that ha if you had done this whole approach, this whole approach with no estimates that it would have been not costed so long or taken so long or cost so much in terms of money. No, it would probably cost less because I would also see. Is that an result. estimate that it's probably going to cost uh, less? No. Burn. How is that an Sorry. estimation? <laughs> I'm not estimating. Well, you're I'm estimating that it's going to cost less. You, you don't Look, know that it's going to cost less. There is less. a difference between estimation and let's say, for example, like an expectation wha or wha why don't, why don't we call like, do you know the difference between weather forecast and weather prediction? Sorry, I'm drinking water. It's okay. No, please explain. Yeah, so basically a forecast is a prediction, but a forecast is based on time of things of happens in the past, right? So the moment that uh, I'm, let's say, forecasting, and that's where the no estimation comes to, to the picture, I worked for a week, and now I can forecast what the next week is going to look like. But the moment that you're trying to make a prediction without forecasting, you are estimating and you are guessing the future. So basically, that's the main difference with this guy talking to me beforehand. Yeah. He hasn't done the work in my house. He doesn't know how my house looks like. He doesn't know the conditions of the walls. He doesn't know the condition of the floor. So he is estimating on something. But so then if he say, look, I'm going to fix. But, but didn't the guy go and get all the, um, the information, all the, the, the plans of the house? Yeah. Uh, he didn't assess your house at all. He never visited or anything. No, I mean, he was in my house, but then he said, uh, and that's the argument of all the time, right? It's like, yeah, I have done this before so many times and I, I'm a professional. I know how is this done. And then they estimate yeah. something without, yeah. of course, being able to estimate because you are never able to estimate what you do not know. Those are the no. unknowns unknowns. Yeah. So, but isn't that the argument to actually invest more planning and then estimate? Exactly. So let's, let's go into that line. So we're going to invest now more time. And again, I, I want to focus very much on bringing to software development. Sure. Uh, a lot of the times when you're going to investigate about, oh, let's just investigate this, you yep. are already doing the work. Exactly. And then in the yep. end, you, you investigate it, you, let's say, invest it sometime in this to come up with a number, what you could already have fixed it. Okay, but that's, that's the thing, right? But that's it's also an assumption, right? about No, it's not an assumption. No, you're, you're spending time to predict something that you're never going to get right in the first place. So why would you even spend your time, right? That's the argument. That's, or, yeah. Um, yeah. So that, it's a great argument. So mm -hmm. I'm going to explain this in a, with a different example. I worked for a big uh, e-commerce company and there was a huge discussion that they wanted to have, uh, well, very technical terms, but like an API gateway. Uh, and that was this huge discussion. Let's estimate, let's estimate. So the whole team went on this estimation process to figure out uh, how long would this take. And they put a lot of uh, effort to figure out uh, yeah, how would they do it, understand the landscape. Uh, and in the end, they estimated three weeks after two weeks of investigation. And as a true story, the implementation took two days. Uh, yeah. And yeah. there was two weeks of investment plus three weeks of estimation where the work was actually two days. Yeah, right? Okay, so it could be more efficient, but not necessarily Wait. stating that estimates are wrong. Well, if or you useless. look at it, it's useless. Right now, well, basically wasted on. two weeks. You Maybe two not weeks. for the business, right? Maybe the business thinks it's fine. If how they want to invest two weeks, if they want to invest two weeks, so that's you know how long point. it's going to take. And then the business discussion is the following. Okay, then estimate some other stories. Oh, no, this one is going to take a week, but this one is going to take three weeks. Right. That's how they say they, the other user case for estimation to make prioritization, low, let's say low hanging fruits. But in this case, it took two days. But what, so how long would it have taken if they did not took the time to prepare? Maybe then it would have been three months to implement if they did not didn't do prepare. investigations. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
Yeah, it could be, but it could also be that the, that's the whole thing. The what I'm debating is not on the planning. What mm -hmm. I'm debating is the estimation part, and it they actually had the job done on the investigation. Yeah, and then the estimation becomes a total different problem because it said, "Oh, we need to prioritize that later." But I think the discussion shouldn't be, "Oh, let's estimate this to figure out the priority." It's like, "Let's figure out what is the most important thing for us right now." and get the job done independent of how long it's going to take. And then we're going to minimize that amount of work to get in smaller increments to see if it makes sense to continue doing this. Yeah, but often you don't have the time that you're saying now applying. That implies that you have unlimited amount of time to just implement the things of that course you want to implement. No, of course not. Because so how let's let's talk in a team again, right? Uh, mm -hmm. What happens Again, I'm just bringing my own experience with this. Yeah, uh, there perfect. was uh, this big international company that I worked for. And of course, now everybody uses Scrum. So we did the whole ceremonies and everything how it was supposed to be. And then you do a planning. And uh, in the end of this planning, you create uh, an estimation. And then we can bring this story about uh, story points, relative estimation, t series, all that. So we did it. And then suddenly, we fit those into the sprint. Uh, comes the end of the sprint. Wow, let me tell you, it didn't finish what we actually predicted to be finished. And then what happens? Wow, that goes to the next week or to the next sprint. 40 sprints later, we are still implementing. It's like we have endless time, right? Like it doesn't really matter which number you put, you're gonna keep working on it because this but is the most important thing to do. But wasn't the margin of error you know, getting smaller and smaller, like, okay, the first week your predictions are totally no. off and then maybe like 12 sprints down the line, your predictions get more and more accurate because uh, then no. your retro might need some work. So, <laughs> yeah, thanks for building that case, Rolf. So it, instead of getting better at estimates, you just like you said, oh, estimates are useless or so we don't have to do them. No, that, that's the assumption. So we had those discussions on a retro every single time and that's when the fallacies come to picture. We believe we're going to become better at estimation, but we have a bias that we over, always overestimate how easy things are, how uh, not complex they are, and how fast we can do. And that's why this just doesn't work. We tried for two years to become better at estimation. We're never being able to estimate. And the part that comes more and more complex is that you have a team with new people coming in, new people joining. So every time there is a new team member coming that mm -hmm. is actually unaware of those estimations or don't understand. Uh, and I say the market kind of pushed to have this uh, relative estimation, right? Like with story points, that is a total different story. Uh, yeah, yeah, we that can nobody, have a podcast on that later. <laughs> exactly. <guess>. That's <laughs> nobody really agree what it is. Uh, and then in the end, you can never have this getting better. And a part of the front, the most interesting is the conflicts between senior developers and junior developers, right? A junior say as an example, like, and I, I, I've been in that shoes. Oh, mm -hmm. I think this is gonna take me a full day. And a senior guy's like, what? A full day? Of course not. You, I can just do this one hour. No, let's change this estimation. So you are a junior developer. You don't really know, you feel the peer pressure. Okay, let's do it uh, in two hours. And of course the guy was already like thinking that he could do in uh, eight hours, but he couldn't even do in two days. That guy is me. Uh, so yeah but that's also a, a problem of, of the individual right because usually when you estimate stuff or like do sprint planning it's a team effort not and then a senior should know to take that kind of stuff into consideration right correct and then then i became a senior at some point and i noticed that i would do that to my senior peers dude like come on this is not that hard right it's like an api call to the database or uh, whatever and then you are done with it and the guy say yeah i i totally agree so yeah i'm gonna change my estimation back to something mm -hmm. but that's the dangers of it the conversation is about the estimation and this yeah, is the only thing we don't want to talk about in my opinion but why wouldn't you well maybe the discussion should have been something else maybe the discussion is like okay well why do you think that this is take so short and why do i think that this is taking uh, gonna take me so long is it because of our experience or is it because i see things that you don't see Exactly, I yeah, agree. That, that, that is that is the part. value. But that's the purpose of the estimations that you actually bring, start having these conversations. I don't think that's the purpose, but I think it can be used as a tool. Yes. 
And and another thing that I found interesting that where you said like yeah, forty sprints down the line, we're still estimating and still getting it wrong, and we're still developing. So no one killed your project or whatever. So you know, estimates are always wrong because yeah, no one can predict the future. But that might not be a bad thing, right? It it, it might I be think the it best. Is. Why is it? Because I mean, clearly you guys weren't actually getting called on your estimates. Yeah, so, uh, well, we all got killed as estimates, right? So all the time when you have, then you are accountable. The manager make you accountable for it. And then we want to have, let's say, I had that, right? In the same company. Mm -hmm. It's like, wow, you guys need to get better at this, you know, like this. And then we but have- what were the consequences then? Like what people were getting fired? You don't get your bonus. You don't get okay. your bonus. You don't get the salary raise as much as you are because your team is not performing as supposed to be. So uh, what actually happens is that- uh, and that's the, the whole dangers of it, right? We keep discussing about always estimation, getting better at it with something that is impossible to get better at it, and then deviates the main focus of like, I agree, we should talk about why there is a gap. Why is that? But the problem is people don't fully get that. And then suddenly uh, the whole goal of the project is delivering time. But th it's not essentially a problem that people don't get that. It's not a problem with estimates. It's actually a problem of people focusing on, on what they need to be discussing and being focused. Yeah, so if you are using a tool that is supposed to help and is not helping, then what do you do? Well, but it's not the tool. It's not the problem in the tool. Well, I disagree that? on that. Because on the other hand, you put down, the manager expects a certain number of you. Correct. And then you're going to have a discussion about the number, not necessarily about anything else anymore. No, but then... Look, the estimates as as they're imperfect and they're wrong and we all agree to that and estimates in certain cases like we just covered these cases in before if you don't provide a proper estimate or you don't come up with a number to a customer where you're Sorry, pitching with what is a proper estimate well proper estimate i mean as a number as a final number and like maybe it's a it's the unfortunate term right now but final number i mean like an offer like so a final you... guess yeah the final guess Oh, that's cool. Sure, a final guess. If you don't provide <laughs> that, you don't get the project, right? Yeah. So there's, um, so that you, know, you can have the debate whether you want a project like that or not. Uh, my experience is that, well, if you don't do that, you get no projects, no new projects. Mm -hmm. uh, so that raises the questions like, okay, you need to do really proper estimates. And well, the risk the risk here is if you underestimate and uh, your time and effort, then obviously you have a big price to pay because then you still have to have to get the job done. Yeah. And if you overestimate, well, somebody else can do a bit um, better, more specific estimation than you, and then they get the job instead of you. So right there, so that's the call for having a uh, estimating as close as you can to what you need to be as lo as close as you can to the actual work that you need to be doing yeah uh, um now to get back to the discussion from a hick on uh, is it a tool or is it or is it not a tool why wouldn't you try to get better because you've already been doing well you've trying to get better but like you've already d going through this iteration and you say the team is losing the bonus because of this it's in the power of the team to adjust the estimates right it's in the power wow. of the team to adjust Oh, well, maybe we lost three sprints. We saw that we estimated this and we overdid it. Like, oh, maybe we should uh, be a bit more conservative yes. here. So what do you think happened? Let's just have a guess. Yeah, I'm, I would guess padding the numbers or exactly. like, oh, okay, I fixed this issue and this is what we promised to exactly. deliver. So the rest of the week I can chill out and uh, exactly. have a beer. So basically that's the other effect of it. Then everybody start underestimating everything. So now who is losing is their whole company, the whole customer as everyone else. Because you are now being punished, or I'm not saying the punishment part is correct, but the point is, after trying to get better, you basically mm -hmm. do a correction. And this correction has a negative impact too. Because now you are upping up the numbers, what brings you not again to the point where you want to be. So for me, the realization came, this makes no sense. We are not getting better at estimation ever. Doesn't matter what I do, doesn't matter which area uh, of software. Uh, the discussions are getting polluted. We are getting punished. Uh, I noticed that if we don't deliver in time, yeah, we still have to deliver it anyway. We get shortcuts that in the end, we have to fix them as well. So, But then, but, but, but then how, because I think Pancha has a valid uh, argument here that, you know, 
projects are being sold based on estimations that that companies give so how would you then motivate a company to hire you as a developer if you say like look man you know just just pay me for one or two sprints and uh, you know see what i can do and then hopefully you're happy and then we can continue exactly i mean yeah who's going to buy into that realistically well, Realistically, I've I've been working like this for the last uh, five years, uh, and it's and it sounds counterintuitive, but the thing is, I can understand it. Let's say from uh, Punch's background, because he uh, participated in tenders and things that is let's say, uh, well fixed, and I think it's a horrible system by itself. But it's a different story. Uh, but when you are working in a company or with a customer or is your internal project, this is much easier to sell because you are telling to your, let's say, stakeholders, look, I'm going to deliver everything to you in a much shorter cycles. The thing is, it, it's of course a totally different mindset, but if you need to tell a number to get the project, of course, it's never going to work. It's, yeah, it's so never we might as well work. just end the podcast here with this Exactly, <laughs> exactly, pretty much. But then if you are 90% of, uh, no, I wouldn't say 90%, but I don't know. But if you are like me and everybody else who, you should be a developer in a company that is already have your salary. They already pay your team and they just asking for estimation. Yeah. Stop doing that. Well, the thing is, I think we're, we are coming and this is the part we, we both agree. I think we can agree in what I'm about to say is that probably proper communication through bottom up or top down or however you, you want to call it is more important than the actual, than the actual accurate estimates because that has always been my experience in the past uh, then why would you do the estimate that's what i don't get because you need to you need a way to start a relationship you need something to start a relationship otherwise they don't have you cannot base it on, on anything but so what but that sounds saying, the wrong the wrong step to start the relationship in my yeah, but, opinion. The, but there is no other way to do it well, of course there is how well, sure let's there start isn't. working together of course there is no, because there. Look, you don't even get to start working together because there are far, four or five other companies, just like you. So in the context you're describing, on it. in the, the context you're describing, basically, like we've been working with no estimation with for Scout. I joined for Scout three years ago, and we have. I have never done a project with estimation, ever at for Scout. And two years prior to that, I have never done. But I'm saying, if you're going to participate in a tender, and the requirement is give me hours, numbers, and things, I totally in with it. Differently, what I'm, totally possible. But what I'm, what I'm saying is not necessarily tenders. It's big companies, they do have, um, let's say you wanna, they wanna implement a new commerce platform. Yeah. Um, and without naming names, there's like, okay, well, we send out a open, uh, uh, what is it, request for proposal? Mm -hmm. We we set our parameters in there. Uh, we give uh, the roughly budget that we need, and these are the requirements that we want to cover with this budget. And I'm not going to discussion if that's correct, if that's aligned or not. But this is what you have to work with. Um, and what they would do is they would schedule a couple of calls maybe during that process, and you have like a week or two weeks to answer that. And well that request for proposal goes out to well, five, ten different companies. Half of them would choose to answer it. Half of them would maybe well have enough work and don't bother. Some of them would find it too risky. And then you know, you're left with five companies competing for that. So now it becomes really crucial that you actually get your estimates as closely as accurate as you can. Because the risk is you're not getting it or you, you're... I agree. It would be crucial. And the point is you don't get it. And the problem is, and, and well, the problem, not the, the solution is actually once you are in, uh, it, it, it proves that alignment and communication with the customer is more important than the actual estimates in the end. Yeah. If, if you bring them along with your journey and having the communication with them in terms of, hey, this is what's happening, what we're doing this week, this is what we're, we're doing next week, you have good refinement sessions, you have, um, and you keep alongside and you keep them up to date with all the obstacles that you're hitting generally they are perfectly perfectly understanding of that because a lot of the problems and obstacles they are causing themselves as well and then if you build a good rapport with them it's never it's generally not an issue so then i have a question then instead of giving an estimate why just push a number who cares if it's close exactly. to the budget done give the minimum why number even have the internal possible. discussion 
Yeah, well, get, get the, the minimum number as possible, get the contract and do what you say. Well, that, they that, expect some yeah, sort of commitment, right? And you, uh, yeah, exactly. So you need to do, you need to, well, first you need to know for yourself, well, is this a ridiculous thing that they're asking for or not? Yeah, but you, so, okay, you, now look, let's, they, they send you, you they send you like a requirement list with hundred items and they have a budget like 150 K and you're like, well, we've done projects like this. Hmm, let me look at it. Okay. How many integrations are in there? Oh. Okay, do we have to build front end on, I don't know, do we have to uh, uh, integrate uh, ERP, CRMs, or I don't know what, and then it's like, okay, huh, roughly, yeah, so maybe we spend like, a, so generally you spend maybe a day or two days looking at a proposal like that, and then you can kind of give an answer based on experience that you've done maybe a few projects like this in the past. Okay, so that's my question, because... Uh, I, I don't disagree with you. And again, I, I maybe I'm repeating myself. If this is the rules of the game, you don't have a choice. And that's what I'm trying to say is like, there is a better way of doing it. And I think this is not a, a reason to not change that. Because right now, in this process, and we have spoke about that, of course, we don't have to speak customers. But I would like to hear a story that you say, like, we did this, we estimated this, this was the process, we get actually profitable and the customer is super happy. How many this, how many times does this happen? Because I have never seen in my career, never. And I keep hearing people say, yeah, we've done it, but then yeah. we're going to go figure it out. Yeah, it was overestimated. There was a way more budget. In the end, yeah. the customer paid more. Well, we actually did it in the, in the past where we said that we would do something within an X amount of sprints. So we, we never really gave like um, a time period to like, yeah, before July next year, we will be done. But we said like, okay, we can do, you know, this work, you know, these guys wanted to move away from Oracle into something more open source uh, driven. And we said like, okay, we can do that in seven sprints of two weeks each. And then we predefined the steps we needed to take. So every time they wanted to have a different type of functionality or something new, then we said like, okay, but it's gonna, you know, adjust the, the predictions that we gave because, you know, we're adjusting the scope of the work. Mm -hmm. uh, so we kept a close eye on that and, and we got the job done. So um, we did not, estimate each and every single point individually, but we did give a certain time span in which we thought that, you know, the work that they were asking us to do, we could do it and we done it. So And how did you come up to the seven sprints? How did you what how did the process of estimating that went? So uh, in, in, in that case, we, we said like, okay, these guys had two people developing on the Oracle stuff. And then we said like, okay, what's in there? And they did not really have a clue. So basically we said like, okay, we have a bunch of data that's sitting in Oracle and there's a front end and we just need to move that data from Oracle into yeah. a new database and we need to create an API for that and just build a complete new front end. So we took the original front end, how many screens are there, you know, all this kind of stuff and what integrations do we have with other platforms. <coughs> and then we took all of that, shoved it onto one big backlog and yeah, just so, uh, wet, wet fingered it. What's the uh... yeah? Yeah. Can I can I counter this a little bit? Yeah, of course, I know man. Some context on this. I think I know which uh, which customer you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, of course. Of course. It's years and, ago. Uh, <clears throat> I actually spoke to uh, uh, the guy running it back then, I guess, mm -hmm. which I work with, and uh, he said, "Well, the guys did a good job, but skipped at least half of the requirements." Yeah. So you guys claim it was done. Yeah. He didn't say it wasn't well, that's, fully done as. That's interesting, yeah. right? Contract. Because we had we had the backlog and all the items, and they were all like, I mean, the bars were filled, right? Everything was a hundred percent. But it, at it may have been. Was, uh, oh, sorry. The yeah. ones that came to the team, right? And I think we got into the point. In my opinion, it's like yes, you need a deadline, a real deadline, a real reason, and your reason or your deadline was seven weeks, and based on that you prioritize the amount of work you can get done yeah. on that seven weeks. Seven sprints. And that's what but, happened. Uh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. That's what happened. And in my, in, yeah, in my recollection, we did all the work that was scheduled for us to be done. But uh, yeah, I mean, maybe that guy had a different view on things or a different backlog that I had no access to. <laughs> I don't know, but <laughs> yeah. Did you actually read the contract? <laughs> <laughs> no, man, I just came in and did my issues, you know. Yeah. Uh, so we've been talking about estimates and, and scoring big projects and stuff. But uh, in the beginning, Arno has said something interesting as well, where he was just part of a team estimating stories based on story points. And I don't want to get into the story point debate right here, but uh, there's definitely something to be said for the individual developer to just estimate yeah. issues being in a company, right? You don't have to score a project. You just need to improve on a product. 
and still people are asking for estimates on those as well. Can you can you maybe elaborate a little bit on that? Uh, I know how did that make you feel? Did you feel like it was worth your time, or did you also feel like, man, why why am I even doing this? Because I need to do this work anyway, so let's just do it. Well, uh, at that time I was a bit younger, I would say. So I was thinking like a, like maybe a meteor. So you just follow the process a little bit, what mm -hmm. they expect and what they want. And in this case, the business wanted those uh, well story points, and for the reason. Uh, yeah, they see they saw everything as a project, so I think that's that's one of the things that was a bit of a mistake. What every every we actually delivered products. Every feature was a project, or yeah, well, at least you deliver a project and then you leave it behind and then you move forward. And okay. They really wanted to know how long the project was going to take mm -hmm. because that would uh, fulfill their Excel sheet, I would guess. And that's where we started with, and then we went to a little bit of a similar cycle I heard before. Okay, so you do the estimates, you do the sprint, and then you figure out you didn't make it, and then, okay, what's wrong with the estimates? So that's where you go in them. And then we try to improve it, and I think that went on for a little while as well. And did you improve your estimates, or? Um, I actually don't recall that anymore, but okay. I don't remember making a lot of sprints. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say no. Okay. <laughs> and I think actually that was, uh, we tried to improve it a lot, like, uh, I don't mm -hmm. know, you have certain ways of doing it, then you do with complexity, then a little bit of time and risk and blah, 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 all things came across. And I think they never worked. And in the in the longer run, I think we just ditched the whole scrum and then went to Kanban and just do the first thing first and then just fix it. Yeah. 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 So, and I think for me personally, that worked the best. But, and that's the thing, when you did the Kanban, right? Did you do uh, some sort of... Um, um, deadlines on uh, what had to be delivered um no but yes i think there was a deadline it was very simple because the contract was going to cancel that was it so the, the goal was very easy to you know like move this uh, piece of software to one other piece of software or integrate to some other piece of software and that was it and the approach was actually fairly simple it's like okay hey, what's the most well important thing to do on that right now and that's where we moved on from. Yeah, because one of the sort of often pointed out, well, drawbacks or downsides maybe or, or no estimates is that if, if you don't work against deadlines, if you have no estimates, and people also tend to kind of uh, gold plate sometimes things or... Yeah. Um, well, the, fu um, the funny thing was in the end, I guess, it was done way faster than expected. Oh, that's good. Way faster than whole... estimated or... Ah, well, people on the top estimated stuff yeah. on it, like, okay, this is probably going to take this, so we have to start right now because, well, the contract's going to end and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And it was done way faster. It's so, just like, okay, the last 8% was actually not necessary anymore, like the last few things. Yeah. Like, yeah, we can just ditch it. Some of the stuff is more important. And did we'll you do forward. Did you do the, the, all the projects in a Kanban way or did you also ditch the whole project approach and just said, like, okay, we have a product and we just improve on it continuously using a Kanban-style approach? Or was it still all project based? Like okay, this well, project. most was, yeah, most was project based. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The the thing is, uh, this whole discussion with estimates or no estimates, in any setting, in any relationship, I would guess there is there are there is an estimate estimation happening on some level somewhere. In the end, the person that has to pay like estimating roughly. Oh, is this going to cost me? How much is it going to cost me or not going to cost me? So they, that, mm -hmm. that happens explicitly or implicitly. I think by asking the developers or the people that are actually going to do the work to have a say in it, you kind of also help them in, uh, well, at least if you're a, a good salesperson or a good uh, manager or whatever you want to call them, you don't want to burn the team. Because I've seen that also happen quite often where deals have been made mm -hmm. uh, by salespeople who are completely detached from the development process and things have been agreed well oh well we can definitely do this and build this in three months and then well okay my job here is done as a salesperson i'll throw it over the the fence to the development team and the operations and it's like yeah that's where you end up with uh, having a lot of a lot of troubles and yeah. projects going out of out of budgets what I, where i've seen this work better is when you've involved the dev team in that process as well. At least get a feedback and get, okay, is this crazy what we're saying here or not? Help us here. 
No, yeah. I, I think I, I, I tend to agree, but uh, the part that I found is, uh, let's say, uh, when, when it goes back to me on the, the root cause of the issue is, and I think maybe we're just speaking about different things, right? Because I look at uh, soft development as a product, as a thing that never finishes, and the word that you use mostly to describe, you, you describe as a project. So a project has a beginning, a mid, and an end. But yeah, with software, I don't think that's the case. It should not be the case uh, most of the times. Uh, and so if I look at it, let's say, sure, we involve development on estimation. Let's just assume these guys are great estimators, right? Uh, let's say they hire us. We are the best estimator on earth. We estimate six months. We build it. Nobody use it, right? It's like your estimation is irrelevant. You basically waste time, money, and effort. Uh, and then we can go down to the path like, yeah, you should get like, involve your stakeholders and get early feedbacks and make sure that uh, if things continue going, yes, then your estimation of six months is irrelevant. So that's why for me, it always goes back to, yes, we need to plan, we need to have a deadline and you need, let's say, okay, if I want to be really flexible, let's estimate a work of two weeks. And then from that on, we no longer estimate, but do we see how much we got backwards. So, so but an estimation if, of six months doesn't necessarily say you have to fulfill the six months, right? You can stop earlier. No, but as a thing, I'm if really I'm, if, that. but as a thing, if you say we estimated a project, right? Let's say it's going to cost a hundred thousand euros. We're sure. going to deliver this in six months. Everything yes. is going according to plan. You're not going to stop it. You're going to keep developing until you finish the budget and the project that you estimated. And yeah, so you build the perfect product, you've made the deadline, you've made all the budgets, but then it turns out that the project sucks. That's what you're arguing, exactly. right? You're kind of ref implying here that you start six months and you don't talk to the customer for six no, months. No, that's not what I'm ever. saying. What I'm saying that, is that's that... That's what it sounds like. And that's what I'm saying. And then you talk to the customer, you involve it, and the customer say like, okay, this is wrong, we should redo it, or we should go in a different direction. Yes, your estimation now it became irrelevant because yeah. you go into a different direction that you estimated six months of work. So you, you, you brought back your salespeople, your developers, your front end, your designers, you estimated a six month project, you gave a number, two weeks in, boom, oh, totally yeah. different direction. So oh. you wasted hours and yeah. hours to basically now do what the no estimation is saying. Wow, no. look backwards, we have done this, we're moving that way. And that's the whole point. It's like the estimation well, becomes a waste of time if it's... Well, I, I, I tend to agree briefly, but not completely, because uh, and here's why, because now we are focusing purely on the things that are measurable here in hours or money that you did you spend. Yeah. But the thing is, you are two weeks later in the process. So your relationship with the customer has developed. And actually, you've been far more before during the whole estimates and pitching. So you've actually started building rapport with the customer far earlier in the process. And if you haven't participated in this, well, yeah, but then dance but then or game, you you would have never. No, but then to you're talking point. again what Arno said. Just give them the most likely number that the guy is going to do it, and then forget about this number. And then that was it. Like basically, you are saying, let me lie to you a number that is going to get this contract, and in between, I'm going to make sure you get the best result. That's so, what you're saying. So if I then can take it, does it happen. So Often if I can then take happen. it back to the con construction guy that you referred to at the beginning, if he gave you like a super fake number that you would hire him and then he would start work and then you guys would evaluate the work that he did every three days, would that would that be a mode that would have worked for you? Next time, for sure, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm going to get to know the guy and hire him per hour and then see the process. And then <laughs> after that, I'm going to say, okay, this work or doesn't. I'm kind of, okay. I kind of don't dislike it because we kind of have a feeling we're coming down to some sort of an agreement that we kind of agree. But yeah, actually so what I'm liking of it I, is I, that I, I don't that, <laughs> that estimates are not useless. So no, I don't agree with it. I don't agree with it. I think we actually totally disagree. I think estimations are useless. I well, actually still stack, but I don't think they are useless. I think they are harmful even. Yeah, so you're I saying that you need a, a harmful estimate to get your foot in the door and then you can build a relationship with the customer and actually... No, I think we don't need that. Okay. That's the whole thing. I think the, 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 the model that Puncher is describing, this is exactly what it is. You give a fake number to exactly. get your foot in the door and then you build a relationship. And the model that I believe is like you build a relationship on the moment that you meet and then you see how it goes. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I'm just going to tell you a, a story with uh, one of the last pitches I worked for with my previous employer. And... Um, 
so we did a we did with them a with this client, potential client, uh, about a year ago, we did a proposal to rebuild their commerce platform. And it was us and two other parties. Um, and for whatever reason, they chose one of the other parties. Um, all right. So the project starts and then somewhere five, six months down, down the line, they call us back. Uh, the party that um, kind of messed, the party they chose didn't deliver. Uh, after what was it five months and it's like okay can you guys please help us like can you, are you willing to pick this up no. does it give a cheap estimate or a normal one so well here, here was the uh, so here's here's what, where it gets interesting uh so we looked all right well we need to basically and and they, they were like oh we want to re reuse as much as it's there from what they built we're like all right great but we probably need like about two weeks to dive into what's in there it's other companies code we don't know what has been delivered what hasn't been delivered uh, we want to approach this and this, but so we need like some, uh, yeah, about two weeks and then we can give you a good proposal based on this, roughly what we think uh, the ballpark of this would be. So they're like, all right, all right. Oh, that sounds, sounds good. So, so uh, well, well, we'll discuss next week and we'll get back. All right. So next week comes around there, there it's silent. Then the guy calls me up. He's like, oh, wait, uh, I, I just sent you a document. We also have a phase two, uh, and I need an estimate for that one as well. I'm like, uh, what do you mean? It's like, oh, well, first we need to rebuild what this uh, this previous company um, didn't complete, and then we need to build up on top of that with phase two, and we need an estimate for that. It's like, well, yeah, I'm sorry, that's impossible to to do with some sort of accuracy. I mean, I can give you a number, but it's going to be like ridiculous, and it's going to be me lying to you. Yeah, I get it. I get it. But I'm being pushed. All right. Uh, and I and then I go back. We discuss it internally. But it's like, yeah, this is this is ridiculous. Right. So it's like, no, we stand back with what we told them. I was like, OK, we're going to charge a some amount for these um, two weeks, like for uh, diving in. And if we get to do that second phase, if the project ever gets that far, you know, we, we can get it as a kickback fee. And then it became silent. And then it came. They came back to me. It's like, no, we found a company who did the whole estimate, uh, uh, both uh, phase one and phase two, and everything. I was like, well, <laughs> good, good luck, luck to you <laughs> and to them. So, did you know how it ended up, or? And I don't know, because this was this conversation was somewhere in September, and I guess okay. they started. And I've I've no idea. I'm curious. I'm curious. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like in a way. So the company is bankrupt right now. <laughs> I drove by their office uh, last week. I saw their logo was still on. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> but the lights were off, I guess. <laughs> it was Christmas. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It. <laughs> no, but this is this is the the picture I'm trying to paint you. What you're kind of up against, what you're dealing with, right? Um, and if you already have the relationship, and well, yeah. basically you're offering them, oh, let's start this, you know, and then even well, if this project goes far, you know, the money that you are investing now in this research like yeah it's gonna be for free then somebody else comes along it's like oh well we're, we're gonna do it I'm like, all right good luck yeah exactly i think it's definitely good luck right it's like promising the impossible but in the end that's a whole and that's the downside like in the end they're gonna pay for it <laughs> of course of course and uh and that's a, that's my point is that's why you need to do proper estimates because the moment that there's no chosen... such a thing as proper estimates Dude, there is <laughs> So, because you, I mean, we've been talking about the negative aspects of estimates a lot, right? I mean, Panchi, there has to be there has to be a positive note to this, right? In order to 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 conclude this episode, like no, but I I really want to like a point pinpoint it is like explain to me and to the people who are listening what the hell is a proper estimate? Because every so if the I proper do estimate is me reminding you guys that the podcast we've been recording for around fifty minutes now, and you asked me how long it's going to take, uh, so, so you need to be aware sure of that. that. Uh, <laughs> it's around around an hour. <laughs> so this is a proper estimate, and oh, me communicating no, back to you guys. <laughs> this is where we're getting at. This makes no, no sense. because if it's going to take an hour, we're going to stretch it to one and a half, just to make a point. <laughs> Not with me on board. <laughs> But no, yeah, but like I think I think that is like uh, well, we did had the pleasure to have a Woody to do a workshop for us at some point, and I think he made a a fair point like in this workshop, like was about with twenty two people, and uh, one question he asked that was I found it extremely funny, and uh, uh, he asked how long does a three months project last? So three basically, months. 
Exactly. That's what should be the default answer. But everybody laughed and said 20 months, 12 months, 9 months, because nobody believed that a three months project is going to last three months. You talk to a project manager, oh, the developers or whatever gave me this estimation. Oh, yes, I always double it. You know, so the whole thing is inflated by default. Yeah. And that's the part that I think is like, it's harmful because it makes it uh, you not having the proper conversation. And I think that's the message that, let's say, at least I would like to bring. Let's talk about what is really matters. And let's say, let's forget about the, the number and let's really discuss why we're doing what we're doing. Yeah. And it might be a bit too late to get into the discussion now, right? But how did how did the industry get to this point where everything revolves around an estimate in order to, you well, know, to get my, permission to do stuff? My guess is because we came f copying all the engineer things because we didn't know what we're doing 50 years ago. And we compared ourselves to, let's say, normal CV engineer. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think that's the biggest mistake you can make it as a software company. Yeah. And I believe it's because we're time-driven as a society, as, as, as a race. Things revolve around certain cycles. But so you can have the cycles without having the estimations. The cycles, they don't go away. They are still there, but you don't need to estimate for it. Well, you kind of do, because if you don't get some, some if you don't get your wood chopped before the snow falls, like you're going to freeze. Planning. That's not estimation. Well, it's, it's estimation of maybe, mm. well, of that's knowing how much wood you need to chop for the winter, right? Not per se. So what do you, what do you mean so, not per se? So I, I really like the example of, let's say, water forecasting, right? So if you try to predict how the weather is going to be uh, next year, you're going to get this wrong. Always. Because there is way too many variables. It's not something that is, let's say, uh, simple as, like, say, assembling a Lego. Uh, and that's what the whole forecast thing comes to the picture. It's like you look at previous data, and then you can predict better how the future is going to look like. So the example you give, and that's what we do all the time, we iterate. So in the winter, let's say I took, I don't know how you measure that, but like two kilos of wood. Yeah, that was not enough. Then next year, you're going to say, I'm going to do three. You're not going to do an estimation. You're just going to say, well, last year I did two and didn't work. I make a barbecue with friends. People say, wow, estimated 200 grams meat per people. I do that. Then the next one I see, oh, that was not enough. I just add another 100. You're not going to estimate, oh, yes, uh, different numbers. So you just get the previous information and you add to it. But even so, even if you do that, you would still be wrong. You would still never get it completely right. You Correct. will still not get burned the wood then, to the last wood. You will not eat the food to the last food, Correct. right? But then I'm not wasting my time trying to predict it. And that's the whole discussion. And then for things that are a bit more complex, then we are talking about the thing that it matters not about the estimation. And then the thing is, I, I have a belief that things that are hard, easy to measure, they become the target. And this is not the point. The point is not deliver things in time. That was never the goal, but that becomes the goal. <clears throat> yeah, here, here I can agree with you. And that's also, if the thing is, if you enroll a project that takes six months, and if you deliver everything that's been specified on the beginning of the project and that's what you deliver at the end which in practice never happens but let's say that assume that happens that probably you've missed a lot of opportunities along yes. the way or you probably deliver something that is no longer useful exactly but then my, but in practice what i'm saying is that never happens in practice my experience has been that oh as you go you need the estimate you need the numbers you need those things to kind of not burn yourself if in case you get the project and kind of well to get in and then through proper communication and alignment, well, you steer the project um, in the right direction with what you're saying, the values and delivering what actually matters. So I think that's the part we're never going to agree, right? I don't think you need those numbers. And you think you do. And I think that's where this is going to probably stay. Yeah, we're <laughs> going a bit in circles. Um, so it's an hour. Come on. Yeah, man. On. We've actually we've actually made the hour. So uh, I got I to gotta give it to Pancha here that uh, this prediction... Uh, kind of came true although i mean if you want to be uh, if you want to be an asshole you can say like well you're 50 seconds off or whatever so um, and I, but on I the other hand did we actually deliver the value you know yeah. i don't know that, that, that that's the question we were going <laughs> so i think, I think uh, pancha went in the circles to make the hour you know I think that's, uh, <laughs> like a true manager that. yeah
And and I don't think that was, let's say, uh, an estimation. I think it was more a deadline that we tried to reach and we tried to aim every podcast to be one hour. So it's not that we estimated that this is going to be one hour. We just make it to be one hour. So mm -hmm. I still stand to the point. You mm -hmm. do need a reason to stop, but you don't need to estimate to there. And every estimate you do based on previous experience and other boundaries that you exactly. know. Exactly. And, so and we have four different episodes and that's how we know that would last one hour. And that's, you made my point. And that's how you make <laughs> estimates as well for projects no. as well. No, of yeah. course I not. Think, uh, I think with that, uh, we, can, uh, <laughs> we can leave it to the listeners. You guys should tell us what, uh, what you think. Uh, you know, is the estimates thing uh, good or is it bad? Please let us know on podcast at forscouts.nl. Uh, I think we can we can fill another podcast about this uh, particular subject, and maybe we will, maybe we won't. I don't know. Let's not. <laughs> <laughs> let's estimate that. Like I think, how many uh, people wants us to talk? Yeah, about let's this estimate it. No, but uh, <laughs> I, I think I think I would like to have a podcast about uh, you know estimation with points or just like with a one or with a zero or with a, I don't know. Uh, yeah. it might be an interesting one uh, in the future, but okay, uh, but we'll see. Much, but, uh... Uh, for now, I want to thank uh, thank you guys at least. Uh, I thought it was a very interesting discussion, and um, I hope uh, you guys listening to it uh, also thought it was interesting. And uh, yeah, and Hik, Panche, Arno, thank you very much. See you guys next time yeah, on the you. Scoutcast. Thank you. Yes, thanks for having us, Rolf. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Scoutcast Roasting Marshmallows with your host Rolf Sir. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit forscouts.nl and on Twitter at forscouts. If you enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time on Scoutcast Roasting Marshmallows. Many hours later, you are forecasting. Yeah. It's two different why? things. Okay. So why okay, so why cannot forecasting be part of that? You can. You can. And forecast is exactly what the no estimation does. I look at the past of work of a week and then I can predict how the work is gonna be in the future. But I'm not forecast, guessing forecast, not predict. Forecast. So forecast uh -huh. is predicting. Uh -huh. <laughs> forecast is predicting. But predicting is not forecasting. An estimation is a guess to predict the future. So when you look backwards hey, in a on. football player you are forecasting how the prediction is going to be. And My it's totally joke. different than estimating. So estimating would be, let's sit the football team together. How many goals are going to do this? Oh no, this team has a good defense. Oh yeah, this is going to be three goals. Okay. Forecasting would be, oh, we played with this team five times in a row and we made two goals. Okay, yeah, but then that's forecasting. That's so, but if you have a so team guys. of developers, if you have a team oh of God. developers who, when estimating story points, don't think about if they've done again, anything this, yeah, any, any of this before, cool. What? Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. If you've had a team of the, if you have a team of developers who are supposed to do an estimate, right? And during that process, they only look at the future. They don't think about, oh, have I ever done this before? Oh, how did that work out? It's like, why do you even want to work with those people? I don't get it. Well, it's an incomplete process if you don't look in the past experiences when when you want to estimate oh, you can, you, or forecast. You can look. You can look at the past, but the point. That's not the point, and that's the whole I, that, uh, that's the whole fucking discussion. <laughs>